talk about source evaluation. Of course, I have a guest with me today, Mark Gatesman. Howdy. And we are going to pummel into your heads how to pick proper sources. First off, the thing that you see on the screen is not a way to get proper sources. No. If you have done this, you have already failed. So let's say you need something by a particular person. You can use this tool that we're on right now to find people. It's fun and easy. Okay, so let's say you're in my adjunct class and you want to know who the guy that's writing all the articles that I'm showing you is. You can Google him. His name is Edward Castronova. Look, I found his web page. It's amazing. That's where he works. Here he is. Here's a picture of his smiling face. Here is all kinds of stuff about the school, but more importantly, here's all kinds of stuff about the dude. He's got a little video, blah, blah, blah. Or if you want to know more, here's his actual web page. And if you want to know what he's done, you can look at his resume, you can look at some of the stuff he's written, other than what I'm already showing you, etc., etc. If you can't find this stuff about your author or something very similar to it, you're probably not going to want to use that author's work. Just saying. And also, even when you do find these things, look at it and make sure that what they're doing is reputable. Make sure they don't work for some diploma mill school. And make sure that their publications are actually in something that's been peer-reviewed. Make sure that you know who is writing this stuff. Because if they're not scholars themselves, then the information that they're writing about, probably not scholarly. Next up, you're looking for information about AIDS, and you want to make sure you get the most accurate information. You can do a search, HIV infection, full text, scholarly, publication date, change all that stuff. And that's all well and good, but let's say you get something like this. This is all fine and good, looks great, you know, article about potential cures for HIV and AIDS, Sounds awesome, and then you look at the last line. Science journalist and author, her tween fantasy adventure novel. Hmm. That's not a good sign when that's the main thing they're talking about the author for, is for her tween fantasy adventure novel. We're talking about Twilight with a little bit less annoying kissy and probably really lame action. I'm sure Jill's a nice person. Just not looking like this is a scholarly article that she's written. If you're looking for scholarly stuff, you need to see something like this. If you scroll down to the bottom of this article, first off, chart's good. Reference, Reference page. Better. Yeah. Reference better. This is the 20 sources that she used to write this article. I'll bet if you go through these, they are all scholarly. I can look at some of these right now and I know that they're scholarly just from looking at this. This is the kind of stuff you want to look for. This is scholarly material that you can show is scholarly. Also, I'd like to point out that two of the things that need to happen are for at least to show scholarship is documentation. This shows documentation. This is saying, yes, this is where I've gotten all my information. You also need to show corroboration. These people working together. There's all the authors. Willing to bet most of those are doctors. Hey, look, all these different places, Department of Medicine, San Francisco, California, Gladstone Institute of Virology and Immunology, Department of Public Health, San Francisco. These people know what they're doing. They're working together to figure it out or they're making cereal. I'm not sure which. All right, finally, let's talk a little bit about relevance. And when you're talking about relevance, really you're talking about pirates. Yes. If I look pirates up in the database, I'm going to get all kinds of fun things. I'm going to get buccaneers, which, you know, they're buccaneers, they're pirates, they're fun. You're gonna get the Pittsburgh pirates. And then of course you've also got computer hackers. Yay. When you're structuring your searches, you really need to be specific enough to get to the information you need. Because let's face it, if you are looking up computer hackers and what you're getting is, oh, let's see, where's a fun one? If you get rum, sodomy, and the lash, I'm pretty sure you're in the wrong century. That's just a guess on my part. Be aware that your searches can turn up things you may not have intended. And it really is just something to think about when you're thinking about your search terms. Think of synonyms and alternate definitions because, I mean, pirates is a great example. Three different kinds of pirates and you're probably not looking for all three at the same time or you're doing a really, really weird paper. That's what we have on source evaluation. If you want to know more, of course, just come on in and we'll be more than happy to help you out. <laughs>